Hey everybody, it's your girl Miss Brown Callie coming back on here. Hope everybody enjoyed their Thanksgiving. I had um seen the Red Table Talk with uh Jada, our mom, and T I and Tiny. So I thought I would do a little review about it. We're gonna start off with the one they did concerning um concerning Deja was a part one and a part two. So we're going to start off with the part one. Um, um, in the part one, they talked about him discussing the hymen and stuff like that. Um, I felt like Jada was trying to help T.I. out. I felt she was trying to cover for him, trying to make him see like, because I don't think he, I, I don't think he'd see anything wrong with what he was doing. In the interview he, he did on a little podcast when he was talking, he is the one who put the information out there. He said people misconstrued it at the Red Table Talk, that they really wasn't getting what he was saying, and it took blowing out of proportion. That's the information you put out there. That's why people were upset. It's stuff you stated. So, no, nobody misconstrued it. Um, by the way, a little side note. Um, there's a different surrounding because I'm still visiting my son. Uh, his birthday fall on Thanksgiving this year. He turned a little 30-30. Um, I'll insert a picture of us together for his birthday. Right there. Yeah, so, yeah, that's my oldest. So, anyway, back to the Red Table Talk. Uh, yeah, so, um, I don't get it with T.I. So, I, he doesn't see anything wrong with it. He feels like that's being a man you... I did like how she gave the little intro, the little background of people, how they um gave their little uh, opinion about, to me, I think it's all about an image. My daughter cannot get pregnant at a young age. That's going to make me look like a bad parent. And I think that's what it comes back to. I need to control the situation. This is the best way to control it. And... That's the bottom line. If that's what it takes to make sure nothing happens, then that's what it is. Because when it came up to, uh, I believe Jada asked or what would have happened if she wasn't a virgin, then it was like, okay, so you made a grown-up decision, so you're going to have to be treated as grown-up, whether birth control, bills, whatever. Tiny kind of did the little, like, roll the eye like you're doing too much, um, but we're going to get into Tiny's reactions a little later in the second part, where she goes into depth about the marriage, about what goes on between her and T.I. and how she deals with him and why she deals with him the way she does. And you can see that this is who he is. So this is his personality. Uh, T.I. is a very... Uh, T.I. has a very narcissistic person personality. Uh, you could tell that he wants everything to go his way, and that's that's it. You're going to do what I say, you're going to do what I want, or else you're not going to be in this relationship. I have full control over everything, kids, women, everything. That is a very, it's mm, not a good way, it's not, I don't uh, I, I, I couldn't be in that type of relationship, put it like that. But, you know, uh, he says it no longer exists and that he was not in the exam room and stuff like that. But he was joking and he says he thought people knew him better than that. But how would people know that? How would anyone know what goes on in your behind closed doors? No one would know that. No one would know what the intimate details between you and your children we would only know what we see on a TV screen or something like that. So there's no way even close people would know that. So um, he has, and Will Smith, you know, greeted them when they came and he declined from, he's like, no, I'm not going to be involved in this red table talk. Will knew that that was not the type of subject he was going to be willing to sit down and discuss. I don't blame Will. I would not have gotten involved in that either. But when we look at the uh, second part, which was uh, done today, 
Um, the second part, they talk about the marriage and how Tiny had filed for divorce and what led up to her filing for divorce and why she decided to not go forward with the divorce. Uh, I thought it was very interesting because when they've been together for so many years and when they got into the details of the marriage and they were talking about how when she kind of gave him like, you know, when he first went away, the first time to prison, you know, when he did the first uh, 11 months or whatever. And she talked about, you know, I waited for you this time. I've been good, you know, loyal, faithful. He that he got out and he got married. When he went away the second time, that's when, when he came back. That's when everything changed. And it was because her outlook on the marriage changed. Her thing was, you know, before I went along with everything he said. He said, do this, or you want to do that, whatever. She agreed to everything. Be Once he came back the second time, she was like, no, we're going to do things a little differently. Uh, she was not so agreeing. She was not moving the same way. And he no longer wanted that. He Well, I should not say he no longer wanted that. Because his thing was like, well, I told you this is what I wanted from the beginning. You chose to change who you were. You chose to go along with it. If because you want to be with me, and this is what women need to learn. This is the learning point, the takeaway, the lesson, whatever you want to call it. My grandmother always told me this, even when, when I was a little teenager, a little girl. Number one, she says, You always keep you a job, always make your own money. When you do not make your own money, you don't have a voice in the relationship. You have no say so on what goes on in the house. That man can change. Not all do, but some do. You can't say how the money is spent. You can't say what to buy, what to eat. Everything is, he's the head. He, he's going to tell you what to wear. You, you lose your voice. You lose who you are because you cannot take care of yourself. You are dependent on someone else for your own livelihood. And you should always be able to provide for yourself. Because what happens when he gets tired of you? What, 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 if, what if he don't want you anymore? Okay, I'm moving on. I want somebody else. Now what are you going to do? You, you haven't worked. You have no money. Now you find yourself in a position where you're not able to... Uh, Handle, take care of business or anything, get your own place. And then because you haven't worked in so long because you've been taken care of. And sometimes you're not even legally married. So you really can't even, what, what do you, you can't, you, there's no divorce. There's no nothing. You, you have nothing to fall back on. You always want to be self-sufficient. Another problem is if someone needs you to change everything about yourself to be with them, that's a red flag. Many times women overlook this. You you want you want to be loved. You want to be with this person so much. You lose who you are just to be with someone. And most of the time, they cheat. They find somebody else. They they and you've done all this just to be with this person, and they're still not happy. They're still not satisfied. And that is a problem because. Tiny was talking about how T.I. told her he no longer wanted her to work. She quit working. And yes, he was providing for her financial, financially and taking care of her mother and everybody else. And he kept his work. He was doing exactly what he said he was going to do. But at the same time, she was not happy. She was not because she was losing herself. She was losing what she wanted to do. She still had desires that she wanted and she was not fulfilling them. Because she was taking a seat back to herself and allowing him to be happy. And Jada was saying how her and Will had the same exact problem. Because she was allowing Will to pursue his career. And what I don't understand is how, why do men need women to stop being who they are when they meet you you okay so you met her she was in this group you met her she was acting why is it that she has to stop be 
being who she is to be with you. I don't understand that. Why can she not continue to be who she is and still be with you? Isn't that what attracted you to her to begin with? So, you know, it's a lot of problems and it shows you how controlling he is because even to Tamika, you know, Tiny, she says, you know, he, he was control, he's controlling. And when I, I stopped allowing him to control me, he found somebody else he could control. So you, so it's like, do you allow yourself to still be controlled to be with this person? Because you know, that's what they want to do. And that's what happens when you give a narcissistic people because they, because their egos are so, I never do anything wrong. And that's what the whole thing is with Deja. I didn't do anything wrong in this situation because I am the father. It is my job to protect her at all means necessary. If that means protecting her hymen from these little boys who are only going to hurt her and break her heart and do all the snap, then okay, that's it. So he said he was never in exam rooms and all the stuff. Her, it, her mother had took her and all this. But that's not what he said. On thing. He was like, yeah, sign that consent form. And, you know, but he, he, he said it was all a joke. But but when you see him do this thing, then you realize, I was like, wow, this man is really a narcissist. Hmm. He really, because, you know, they really don't see what's wrong with it and you know it comes from your upbringing because if you you know and I, you know I had a talk with my my older son we were talking about especially in the black community how this goes on a lot and this is the type of relationships you have to deal with growing up and and that's why it's very important to be careful about who you're dating because you're dating men and women when you're you're because you know I have a daughter too. You're dating people who are brought up in a society where men are taught to cheat. It, you, you're brought up where women are taught to accept it. You know this is okay. You know this is what the men in this family do. You know we may make money and we take care of the bills and we do this, but it's okay because we can have a side chick. Everybody know about it. It's, that's everybody know. It's no secret. So that's the type of things that um, in the black community that's like well known. Or as you have the whole thing about the women and the, what are the women taught? You, you're taught either to be gold diggers. The mamas is teaching them, you know, go get you somebody. Got some, or are you teaching them? No. Go get your education. Go make your own money so you could be self-sufficient, self-reliable, and don't need anyone. Have people who want you because they want you and not trying to change you into something they feel is worthy to be with them. And I think that's what the issue is with... Um, and you would think that Tiny is this, this you know, you're the superstar, you're... You know, you've been making music and songwriter that you would feel that you wouldn't have to change everything about yourself and, and just to be with someone. But you've been with this person for so long, you allowed this to happen. And he says that you did this. You made the choice. And she, he's right. She did. She made that choice. He didn't do anything to her. She she did it. She did it to herself. And women do this all the time. I'm not mad at him at all. She did it. This is what she chose. You chose to change everything to be with him. And you really subconsciously asking yourself, was it worth it? Because all that stuff you could have bought, you could have bought a house, cars, and all that stuff you could have bought on your own. You had money. You're famous. You you could have could have bought that stuff. So that materialistic stuff. That's you have <laughs> Floyd Mother. Well, was chasing after. He would have bought you a whole lot of stuff too. So it's not that you could not have have had the materialistic things your heart desired. So 
Is that love? Does love say you need to change everything you are just to be with me? That's not love to me. Love is accept me the way I am. And if you if I'm not what you're looking for, then you need to find that person. Because you're never going to be happy. Because how long can you keep pretending to be something you're not? If that's not who you are, that's not who you are. Somebody's going to be miserable in a relationship. No matter how many kids. Kids don't make you happy. <laughs> kids grow up. Kids move out. Kids, <laughs> kids get their own kids one day. Believe me, I have three grandkids. Like that. Kids don't make nobody stay. You stay for a little while, and then once soon as they grow up, <laughs> that relationship's dead and over with. And you think about all the time you could have been with someone who really wanted to be with you and appreciate the person you are. Well, that is my review on this Red Table Talk with T.I. and Tiny. To the next one. Peace.